Have you ever wondered to yourself what the best arc in One Piece is? I'm sure you think of Marine Ford War, Water 7, Ling Long Wrong, no, Ring Wrong Long Let, Ring Long. But what about Elbaf? Sure, we haven't actually went there yet, but it has massive potential to be a top three arc. There's many possibilities as to what would happen on Elbaf, such as meeting Shanks, Usopp's character arc, Vegapunk and Devil Fruit knowledge, like the list goes on and on and on. So today we're taking a look at why Elbaf is an absolute theory giant and why some of our favorite mysteries will be answered there. But before we jump into it, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for consistent One Piece theories twice a week. To figure out why we even need an Elbaf arc, why we're gonna head there, let's talk a little bit about Little Garden. We already know from the pre-time skip of One Piece way early on in the story through Little Garden that Usopp wants to visit Elbaf and become a brave warrior of the sea. This was all because of his conversations with Bragi and Dory as to why he wants to meet the giants, meet this Norse mythology island. It almost seems unfitting for Oda to go through these lengths at that arc for multiple times having Usopp saying he's going to visit Elbaf just for it to not happen. Whether the arc is huge, small, medium sized, it really doesn't matter. I feel like at some point the Straw Hats and especially Usopp need to visit this island. We also know that Shanks himself is most likely based off of someone from Norse mythology named Tyr. He had a missing arm, red hair, he used a sword, all of the kind of notable features about Shanks also fits Tyr. And then we also know that Shanks' ship is based on a Norse mythology ship. It is basically one to one. It is the exact same design. Everything Oda does in One Piece throughout this story is clearly intentional. So for him to have Shanks so similar to Norse mythology, there's a point to that. And then looking at Elbaf Island itself, we know there's giants from there. All of the houses, architecture, and landscape is just like Norse culture. Everything's leading me to believe that Shanks is deeply tied into Elbaf, probably even more than Big Mom is. And yeah, technically she had a childhood there. She does have a connection to Elbaf. There's no denying that, but that just furthers the idea we're going to go to Elbaf and have an Elbaf arc. With that being said, in recent chapters of One Piece, we see that Luffy, Law, and Kid are trying to figure out what island they're heading to next. This is very important as all three of them are one ponyglyph away from finding Laugh Tale from finding the One Piece. Luffy's goal throughout the entire story is to become the Pirate King and become the most free man in the world, and the only way this is going to be made possible is finding the missing Poneglyph. When Luffy and the gang went to Fishman Island, they noticed that a road Poneglyph there was missing. As in Roger's flashback, the road Poneglyph was there. So I'm led to believe that all three of these figures, Luffy, Law, and Kid, it doesn't matter which direction they go, I think they're going to end up at the same place, which is the holding location of the final Poneglyph. And I've said this on numerous occasions, I believe this battle for the final Poneglyph, this battle for Robin is going to take place with Blackbeard and Shanks as well. All these people coming together is what I call the Throne Wars of One Piece. Just imagine Luffy, Shanks, Kid, Law, and Blackbeard all fighting to the death for this final Poneglyph. They are fighting for the throne in the war. They are fighting for the One Piece. I'd imagine that Elbaf in its entirety is going to be destroyed. There's going to be a lot of characters that die, whether big or small. There's going to be a huge, huge, huge battle at Elbaf leading to the, someone going to Laugh Tale, which actually actually ties into Norse mythology because in their culture they have something known as Ragnarok, a massive battle where many people died and only few human survivors actually lived to tell the tale. So knowing that Luffy, Law, Kid, and Blackbeard are going to go to Elbaf or at least meet up at some location, what better location than Elbaf? Oda's gonna mimic real life mythology, he's gonna mimic real situations based on Ragnarok and put it in his story known as One Piece. And speaking about large battles, I expect us to learn about Zebek and the God Valley incident during our time at Elbaf. Like us learning about these types of things at Wano, it was just too early. It was too early to learn about Zebek. It was too early to learn about Roger, Garp, the, everything that was going on at that island. But I anticipate us to learn this again at Elbaf. Seeing how Laugh Tale and the final war of One Piece is probably deeply tied to the Void Century, I anticipate that we'll learn something from 40 years ago, the God Valley incident, before we learn about the Void Century. I don't really see Zebek being tied into something 800 years ago. It's possible, but I'm not really lying with that. I expect Zebek to be a separate subject from the Void Century. And again, there's going to be a lot of juicy information that comes from this. Like, what was Roger's main attack? Does Zebek have a devil fruit? Why did they attack God Valley? Why was God Valley so special? Like, through Elbaf, we are going to learn all these things about Zebek and the God Valley incident because of the arc. And another interesting thing about Elbaf in Norse mythology is in Norse mythology, they have a large tree known as Yggdrasil. This tree was the home of many realms and worlds, but the reason I bring this up is because every time we get a glimpse of Elbaf, there's a huge tree there. 
there. Now, if we know that Shanks, his boat, the island of Elbaf are all based on Norse mythology, why wouldn't a tree be? That tree is absolutely massive. We can't even see like the leaves. We can't even see the roots. It is huge. So I'd be led to believe that this tree is based on something from real life. And the interesting thing about Yggdrasil is it actually has an underground world to an extent. We know from way back in Water 7, Frankie bought Adam Tree Wood from the black market. He bought it from the underworld. So if that tree right there on Elbaf is Adam Tree, Treasure Tree Adam, it would make sense that that tree is based on Yggdrasil due to the whole underground plot line, the whole underground aspect. If you're enjoying the video so far, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And it's actually crazy because Yggdrasil in real life is the home to many groups of animals. We know that the four stags live there, a dragon named Nidhogg live there, an eagle live there. Like, I expect us to see different cultures and animals on that large tree at Elbaf, which actually ties into my next subject, the ancient weapon Uranus. So far, we know that Poseidon is located in Fishman Island, Pluton's located in Wano, but we have no idea what, where, when, why, and how Uranus is. That sounds kind of weird. And based off what I just told you about the tree of Yggdrasil in Norse mythology, it would make a lot of sense for Uranus to be an eagle for it to be a bird. If you look back to Shiki's confrontation with Roger during Ed War, we see that Shiki mentions that Roger has an ancient weapon. And at that same time, there's a large egg on Roger's ship that caught a lot of people's attention. For many years in the One Piece community, many people have been speculating what that egg is, and I personally think that is going to be the ancient weapon Uranus. This egg could lead to a dragon, or what I believe to be an eagle, that ends up living on that tree of Elbaf. And it would make sense for this to happen, for these sequence of events to happen, given that Shanks is somehow tied to Elbaf. Shanks having an ancient weapon, utilizing it, being friends with it, whatever the case may be, makes sense given this large tree, Shanks being a Roger pirate, Shanks being an emperor. I believe that Shanks is largely tied to this eagle in Elbaf known as Uranus. But the ancient weapons isn't the only type of weapon we'll learn at Elbaf. I also think that we're going to learn about Vegapunk and Devil Fruits at Elbaf. Given that Laugh Tale seems to be a Void Century arc for us to learn about Joy Boy and all that kind of stuff, I don't think that's going to tie into Vegapunk. Vegapunk is more so recent times as we know that he was arrested only a few decades ago. Joy Boy and the Void Century was centuries ago, so that timeline doesn't match up. And I know through an SBS, a reader asked Oda when we're going to learn more about Devil Fruits, and he told us that a certain scientist would reveal this info. I believe this certain scientist to be Vegapunk himself. And again, seeing how Vegapunk is most likely not tied in with the Void Century, I think Elbaf could be the one arc that we learn the most amount of information when it comes to Devil Fruits. We can learn how they came to be, how awakenings work, why Blackbeard has multiple fruits, especially since Blackbeard will probably show up at Elbaf. I believe the Elbaf to be a Devil Fruit arc for it to be our Vegapunk arc. But I still don't think Vegapunk's gonna be the star of Elbaf. It's definitely gonna be Usopp. We see through the Whole Cake Island arc that Sanji got some shine, and through the Wano arc that Zoro got some shine, and possibly in the future, Nami will have her shine at Lodestar. But we have to question, when is Usopp gonna get his? And what a better location than Elbaf, the home of the giants, the home of the bravest warriors of the sea. And this might actually be an arc where Usopp confronts the big bad, whether he talks to him, gets to know him, has some kind of battle, some kind of fight. That would be awesome for Usopp's character arc. Because one character we know that's deeply tied into Elbaf is actually their royalty, a man by the name of Loki. Loki's actually known to be a trickster. He's known to be a fraud and a schemer, which is actually a good parallel. That's actually a good relation to Usopp himself. And maybe Oda will even take the road where Nolan, Usopp, and Loki are all related in some kind of fashion that would serve the story and Usopp very well. And if we just quickly look at Wano, Usopp didn't really excel. He didn't really play his part. He was kind of running around with Nami from an enemy that ended up getting defeated by a third party character. So I think that Usopp could have a low point right now post Wano and he enters Elbaf really heartbroken and distraught, wondering why he hasn't reached his maximum potential. And through him fighting Loki, him defeating the giants, him getting Thor's hammer possibly, I think this is a great time for Usopp to either bring back Soga King, stay his true identity or create a new identity for him to become this brave warrior of the sea and springboard his way into the final war. But thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe for consistent One Piece theories twice a week. I have a video on my side that you definitely got to check out about the burn scar man in One Piece. But that's all I got. Have a nice day. Peace.